Hello, 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 and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, we're going to talk about using objects as cameras. Now, yes, the camera is an object, but that's not actually what we're going to be doing in this screencast. So let's jump right in. Here I have a scene where I was playing with some displacement on text, and I'm currently moving about in my camera. We can tell I'm doing that because of the little highlighted camera icon here. It looks a little bit different in other versions of Cinema 4D, but you get the idea. If I click this, I get removed from that camera, and I get put into my editor camera, and I can sort of see the scene. I can go to perspective here to reset my camera. I'm not sure why it was showing me top down. But this is typically what you'd see. You have a free camera that you move around, and then you have cameras that you can jump into and out of. Fair enough. Let's create a cone. So I have a cone object here, pretty regular. Since the operation I'll be showing you guys actually functions on the z-axis pointing forward. I'm going to change the orientation of the cone to z+. plus. That's going to put the pointy end forward. That's what we want. We're going to make this, cue, this cone excuse me, point wherever we want. So, with the cone selected, we can go to the Cameras menu and say Set Active Object as Camera. Okay? So, Normally, when you do this, you'll see the inside of the cone because we're now looking from the cone's perspective along its z-axis. To get rid of the inside of the cone, you can turn on back face culling. I usually have it on by default, and what it does is it hides the back faces. You can see that effect right here. I have a giant bowl, and as I move about the scene in my camera, wink, wink, you can kind of see how the bowl is being cut. Well, every time I look at the back face of a polygon, it's just not showing it. Anyway, I'm going to move around here a little bit. Just use my regular, ordinary old camera navigation tools. I'm even using the ones here in the upper right of the window. And as I do that, we're moving around just like a Cinema 4D camera. Now, if we click the camera widget here to go back to our main camera, that's fine. And we can also, up here in cameras, we can kind of say use camera, default camera, puts us back to our default camera. But our cone is now pointing a little bit differently than how we left it. Because we selected the cone, went to set active object as camera, and then moved around. If we kind of just point it right at the top of the eye here, and then say default camera, the cone is now pointing there. So it's actually quite an interesting way to position objects in the scene, but you probably don't want to position cones using this technique. There's better ways to do that. What this technique is actually really good for is lights. Now there is a light tool in Cinema 4D that allows you to interactively position a light, and it's a really good tool, but we're learning about this particular feature. So typically, when you have a light, you want it to point in a certain direction. You use the rotate widget, and you can move it around like that. Just to make things interesting, I'm going to turn on shadows. Let's do soft shadows. Now again, I have display of shadows in my editor. So if you're not seeing shadows, just come down here and turn it on, as long as your video card can handle it. And so we have this light here that we can rotate and we can move but we can also use it as a camera. So we can say set active object as camera. Now we're looking through the light. We can move the light around. We can orbit around certain parts of our scene. And most importantly, we can control occlusion and shadowing. For an example, if I created a cube, notice I'm still looking through my light while I'm doing this, and I put the cube on the ground as best as I can from this angle. 
and I wanted that cube to be in shadow for the first part of my animation. Well, one way to do that is I could go to the default camera and I could say, okay, that cube needs to be in shadow. Let's move this light around until, until we can kind of, okay, there we go, the cube's in shadow. Or I could, with the light selected, say set active object as camera, and then I can just put the cube behind something. Now, since we're looking from the perspective of the light, the eye is going to occlude the light and there'll be a shadow there, I promise you. So we can go back to our default camera and when we look, the cube is in shadow perfectly. It's right there. So this is an interesting tip, not because you're gonna have a lot of fun showing your coworkers and friends, but because it's not entirely practical, but there are gonna be a few times when you think to yourself, I really just want this object to point at something. And I know you can use a target expression to set up a target with a null object and then get really precise control over where an object points. But in this case, it's actually really easy to just make any other object point at another one by using the set active object as camera command. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, share it with your friends. Until next time, see ya.